For our investing lesson today, I'm just going to briefly touch on a few points and refer you to a very good resource over at Marginal Revol Revolution University. And it also has some useful practice questions at the end of each one of those, those little mini lessons. So investment rule number one is to ignore the expert stock pickers. The, the phrase past performance does not predict future performance is literally true. It does not. So actively managed funds tend to have a mix of the winners and losers. And on average, they end up pretty much at the benchmark minus their fees. So it tends not to be worth the trouble. It's actually been shown a handful of times. There have been a handful of people that have just crushed the market to such a degree that it does not look like it was just chance. However, it's extremely hard to figure out who those super skilled investors might be versus just the lucky ones. So in the end, ignore the expert stock pickers. The efficient market hypothesis is that this idea is that the price of assets, the stock market, these different stocks, reflect all the publicly available information. So walking through the Challenger crash in the, crash in the Morton Company, fascinating example. And another thing to consider, there, there are very sophisticated computer programs that are trading, like in, you know, microseconds, that are buying and selling based off of new information that's hitting the market. You are not going to go faster than those supercomputers. So you actually can outperform the market by buying and selling based on non-public information. Um, unfortunately, this is usually illegal. It's called insider trading. Even in the cases where the, the some cases where it's not illegal, where it is legal, frequently people who bet in this basically the the bet doesn't pan out in a short enough time frame, and it doesn't work out for them anyway. So. Investment rule number two is you shouldn't expect to beat the market. Investment rule number three is to diversify. Diversity is our strength because we're essentially reducing our risk for free. So if the volatility decreases, the average return stays the same. And it's just this win that you get. It's fantastic. It's a big part of the CAPM model. Again, in order for all of those, for all those scenarios to take place from what we discussed last time, we need cap M to hold, but we can only do that through diversification. Now, one of the examples that's related to this, so what's the problem with investing your money in the company you work for? Well, you could say, oh, I, I like the company I work for. I should buy stock in this company that I work for. Well, take the example of say, employees that worked at a company like Enron or many other companies that simply went bankrupt. The employees bought stock in the company and when the company folded and went bankrupt, the employees, they lost, they, they lost their jobs. And at the same time, their investment portfolio took a major hit. You do not want those two to correlate. So what should you be investing in? I, ideally not your own company because of diversification. Now, just a quick follow up on that. It's so easy to diversify in companies across the entire planet. It costs nearly nothing now. And it's relatively straightforward and easy to avoid home bias anymore, as discussed in the video. So if you take diversification into account and choose funds with low fees, you can end up dramatically reducing your risk and bumping your return. So even a small difference in fees can save you, say, a lot of money. If you invested $10,000 over 25 years, there's a difference of 0.8% between the two, you end up with a $13,000 difference over 25 years. This can be significant. It compounds on itself. So who is more rational, you or the market? As investment rule number four is do not try to beat the market because markets are constrained by the rationality of the traders in them. But you think you're more rational than the market, but but you let's 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 be honest. I'm not. You're not. We're probably not. And let's take it from the pro, from Warren Buffett's advice that he said, "Don't do what I do. Invest in general, well diversified in index funds instead." This is not a conspiracy to keep himself rich and you poor. It was the advice he gave to his own kids. So if you're in a situation where it's like, "Oh no, bad news happened this morning. Should I sell?" Maybe just stop watching the stock market and shoot for the long game.